if Keith, I guess Keith is going to record this, that's great. To watch what I say now. <laughs> Eliminate all the swearing I was going to be doing. But um, uh, we, we had such a successful presentation, panel presentation this past summer, um, as we did a couple of years ago. And I don't know if any of you have looked at the call. Um, the conference is set for July 27th through 30th in Boston. And it would be great to get another uh, panel presentation submitted. I think the call is due by February 19th, so it's right around the corner. And then also schedule some type of Mahara uh, mug group meetup, lunch, et cetera. So I don't know if anyone wants to throw out ideas in the chat area or use the mic. Um, but I thought, um, any yep, go, go ahead. I'm not sure. Did someone want to speak? Oh, oh, yeah, Brian Gregory on the line now. Oh, okay, great. Welcome, Brian. Brian is another new staff member um, joining us, joining the PACE team. Um, Sam left, and we had to hire four people to try to replace her. <laughs> we're, we're, we're still trying to do it, but uh, that's what's happened, basically. So um, so anyway, so we wanted to throw this. Um, yeah, see, sounds about right. Um, uh, so anyway, I want to throw this topic out at the beginning of the meeting, figuring that you'll all mull it over during the meeting, and then maybe we could come back to it at the end. But basically, when I looked at the ABLE call, there are eight different tracks um, for presentations. And, you know, of course, I think that this group is, is flexible and doing so many things. I could imagine us submitting to almost any track. But uh, the last track, track number eight, is called ePortfolio Platforms, and it's case studies of selection, considerations, implementation processes, and targeted ongoing support. And it's a track, a separate track for corporate sponsors. And I, you know, I see sort of pros and cons to going this route, but one possibility might be to do this track with Christina, of course, and be like a Mahara showcase. But again, if we do this in the corporate track, we do, I think we do run the risk of, of maybe not having as great of exposure as a non-corporate track. So I guess I'd just be interested in hearing what everyone, including Christina, thinks about this. But I do think um, our Mahara panel um, could be a natural fit for that one as well as some of the other tracks. So uh, let me know what you think. And does anyone want to chat about this now, or do we want to la launch into other topics and pick this up at the end? Oh, okay. Thanks, Christina. So you're already inve investigating that. Great. I, you're right on it. Terrific. That's wonderful. Yeah, so, so maybe just quickly quickly jumping in if, um, if the mic works, um, because I think that's a bit faster than, uh, than just typing. Um, yeah, so once I've read the uh, call for proposals, and I also saw that this new corporate track was initiated and had exactly the same questions you had, Beth. What would it mean if I'm um, part of the panel? And Trent has gotten back to me with the definitive answer yet. Um, he did say if, if I had a presentation, say, with somebody else, like, like we had Beth last year, then it would fall under the corporate track. But I find kind of a panel where, where it's just maybe five minutes or so would, would not be so great to have in the corporate track if I'm in there. So um, for me participating in the panel, I think for, for that part, I. I'd really like to wait until Trent gave me his answer, and then we, we can make a decision. Because I definitely don't want to degrade the presentation by having it in the corporate track where some people might not really want to go because they're thinking it's just going to be a, a, a sales uh, pitch, which we haven't done with the panel really because it was mostly um, presenting what um, everyone has done at their respective institutions. And so I think um, for me, let's just keep me on the, on the back bench for the moment for that presentation until we have a clear answer and then we can still make a decision whether to include me or not. Okay, thanks so much, Christina. Yeah, I think if we're selling anything, we're kind of selling the concept of collaborating across institutions and the power of that. Um, regardless of the platform. I mean, in this case, the platform happens to be Mahara, but um, I think what's been exciting for me and I think for others in this group is how we kind of get ideas from one another and, you know, the similarities that we um, 
faith in implementing e-portfolios, the challenges, successes, et cetera. So I think that's the exciting piece. Um, but I, I guess I, I'd love to hear from the group about particular aspects that we might want to highlight or do differently from last year, or if anyone didn't like the panel, if there's another thought. Um, so I guess we'll, we'll leave that open. But perhaps you could all be mulling that over uh, while we um, Oh, I see Keith bringing up the, the tracks. Oh, great. Thanks, Keith. Okay. So um, with that, why don't we turn it over to um, uh, Heather and Meg, who I think are going to share um, some, some topics um, about some of our ePortfolio work at Case, and we welcome uh, comments or questions to the chat as they Okay. Great. Thanks, Bob. And let us know if you can hear okay. We're all sitting at my desk, so. Just let us know if there's an issue. Um, so we're working on promoting e-portfolios across campus to increase usage. And Beth, if you don't mind just clicking on newsletter. We send out a newsletter via email to keep the PACE community updated. Um, they can view that. Oh, they can see it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Kay. Keith, That's I don't know if you can click on newsletter for us. Can you, can you do that or? I don't know. Maybe you know what I can do is I'll put the link in. Um, I'll put the link in the chat. That's what I'll do. Um, so basically, we send out the newsletter through email to keep the Pace community updated on things like events and new hires and meeting discussions and minutes, so that they can stay updated. We also keep our blog current, so the community can read more about ePortfolio and academic technology happenings in more detail. And you'll actually see on the screen there, that's a screenshot of our blog. And you'll see we wrote about our four new hires and expansion of the department. So it's just a way to keep everybody updated on what's going on. And then every month, we choose a great ePortfolio and feature them on our ePortfolio homepage, the blog, and shout them out on Twitter. So we interview the student and incorporate quotes and images from their portfolios. Um, sometimes professors will suggest students that they really like and they think we should feature, but sometimes we'll also just scout them out on our own and send them an, an email um, with an interview request. So that's just some of the things that we're doing to increase the usage of ePortfolio. I'm going to take it from here, guys. Um, hi, I'm Heather. Uh, Beth kind of gave me an introduction, but I just wanted to say hi. It's good to meet with all of you. Uh, so some of the other stuff that we're doing at PACE is that we are trying to get professors to incorporate a portfolio in their courses. So we do in-person class demos and we try to come at the beginning of a semester and towards the end when they're going to be evaluating work that's been uploaded. And what we do is we kind of walk them through the basic steps of the Mahara interface, how to upload an image, you know, how to add a text box and that sort of thing and give them a general introduction to what the tool is and how they can use it uh, for what they want to do as a student and to showcase their work. And like, if that's not enough, we also have incorporated um, ePortfolio into the PACE help desk system. So in the same way that if someone had a problem with Blackboard or another tool, they now can go in and ask ePortfolio questions and it can be viewed by myself and the whole team. The entire academic team can see um, a ticket and it could be, you know, requiring a one-on-one -on -one appointment or maybe they just have an issue that we can resolve online. But it's just to kind of further uh, the support network that we're giving for this tool. Um, we're going to move on. Um, Keith, if you could go to the next slide. To talk about both Meg and I uh, were Pace uh, University undergraduates. And we wanted to share with you, even though we had very different majors, Meg was an accounting major, I was an English major, that we both were able to use ePortfolio as a tool to showcase our work. So I'm going to give it over to Meg. So ePortfolio can be used in this variety of ways because we have very different majors. So I'm an accounting major. I just graduated with my degree. And I was able to develop my portfolio throughout my four years at Pace. Um, I used the image feature to showcase my accounting experience. So you'll see some pictures of my pages. Um, it just showcases my auditing experience. I was able to reflect on the professional accounting standards using the text box feature and also outline professional certification paths using the plans tool. So you'll see I planned out the CPA path 
and included images and descriptions there. So it really gives a good idea um, of the auditing experience that I gained here at Pace. And then Heather was an English major, so if you'll change the slide to hers. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so as an English major, uh, when I approached ePortfolio, one of the first things that I sort of saw was that I had amassed all of this uh, written material during my undergraduate career, but I didn't really have a place to really, you know, there were places where I could store it, but there really wasn't anywhere I could display it. And ePortfolio, what I did was I took the showcase page and I turned it into my own writing portfolio. And I had all of my written work and I organized it by the genre. So I have there, I have creative fiction and literary criticism. And it was just a way that I could really look at what I had achieved as an undergraduate and reflect on it. I also, to this same page, I could display achievements that I had in my area. So next to my literary criticism, I have awards that I had won for that writing. And it was a nice way to kind of marry, you know, what I had done and also what I had achieved on that page. And then also, this just got me thinking in general about my undergraduate experience, and I developed my active learning page, which sort of connected everything I had done as an undergraduate at, with one sort of theme of how I had approached my studies, and that was active learning. And on that page, I just put everything, conferences that I had attended, pictures of it, like links to content that had been awarded, that type of thing. And also, we have a digital storytelling program here at Pace. And we, instead of writing an essay, we'll have them create a video in a Windows Movie Maker. And I had created those, so I had also included that on my active learning page because it really helped to incorporate that. So even though like Meg and I were very different majors, we were both able to use this tool uh, to showcase our work. So it kind of just demonstrates that ePortfolio can really be used in a variety of ways. I'm going to hand it back over to Beth. Hey, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm, she's, I'm multitasking. She's typing a bit. I'm, <laughs> I'm answering some of these great, great questions, so I'll stop typing and answer with my voice. There, sorry. Yeah, um, there's just been some good questions here from, uh, comments and questions from Keith and Roger, really liking your work, of course, and um, noticing that, or noting that you're, both of you having these great new portfolios, um, you know, it's just such an asset in, in promoting it for students and, um, uh, as you can see, that's that's why they're here with jobs, <laughs> um, because uh, well, first of all, it was a job requirement to get any for having a portfolio, but uh, but because they have this kind of vision with e-portfolios, um, um, they're just a natural fit for this kind of work. Not only with e-portfolio, but my office supports academic technology in general, and because um, Meg and Heather are willing to jump right in and experiment with technology, feel comfortable with it. Um, don't mind the initial challenges or failures and just um, go on to greatness. They have the temperament for this kind of work. And we find that it rubs off on students and most faculty, not all. Um, but we do try to model this for faculty and do encourage faculty to develop their portfolios first before actually requiring it. It's not always, um, they don't always go for that, but I think the better faculty, or the faculty that has better use of e-portfolios do. And as I was mentioning, we do require it now for tenure and promotion. I think we just completed our third or fourth year of that. Um, the limitation there is the tenure and promotion process is, is rather limited as far as e-portfolio use. I mean, if any of you would look at the tenure and promotion template, you would say, ah, this is kind of a meager e-portfolio. It certainly doesn't look like Meg's or Heather, Heather's. But it's a start. It gets them into the tool. And, hope, and it sets a tone from the day that new faculty are hired that this is a tool that they need to use for their own advancement. And so it's in their best interest to get comfortable with it. And we hope we get some ePortfolio fans along the way. So Roger mentions a good point. Um, if only we could get into our staff appraisal. If I showed you the form we had to use for our staff appraisals, you'd all cringe because it's definitely it's the opposite of an ePortfolio. But um, unfortunately, we're not there yet. <laughs> um, so. Hopefully that gives you um, some idea of how we're promoting ePortfolio and some of our ePortfolio diversity. And um, it just reminds me, a couple years ago, this group did a student panel. Um, we did, for our new folks here, we did a, an international student showcase. And I wonder if this spring we might uh, want to think about that again. I realize we have a very small group here today. Um, but I thought that was really exciting. And again, um, just a great way for us to better understand each other's 
initiative to be able to share our student successes. And so we did it um, in such a way that we had the students pre-record because it's really hard to guarantee that students can be here for this particular um, web meeting. So we could talk about that again, but I think that worked pretty well. And we have our annual student showcase, um, our annual student contest coming up in April. And so I just wonder if maybe our spring meeting we might think about um, each of us selecting a sample or two to showcase our work. Let me know what you think about that. Uh, Keith has a question, get an idea of the extent the newsletter um, generates inquiries. Good question, Keith. Um, to date, our ePortfolio newsletter has been uh, a fairly limited release. We've been sharing pretty much with our ePortfolio advisory board of about 30 plus members, plus just our ePortfolio fans, again, a rather small group. But um, because our Office of Academic Technology is really growing and our new CIO is helping us to expand our services, um, we are launching next week, we're launching a, a quarterly e academic technology newsletter that will be both print and electronic. And what I'm, what I'm envisioning for us is that we'll kind of sneak an ePortfolio corner into this academic technology newsletter to really get ePortfolios out there more in mass so that it's not just uh, for the true fans, but we'll get it out there for everybody. And we've made a couple of big steps at pace with ePortfolio in terms of adoption. It's now required for all of our first year students to use uh, ePortfolio through something called the PACE Path. Basically, it's a University 101 freshman seminar course. And all, all freshmen are required. So we, because of that, we saw a real spike in our usage numbers this year. And I think that's exactly the spark we needed because now all freshmen will be using it, all, excuse me, all first year students will be using it. And that hopefully plants the seed for um, having more students have Richie portfolios like uh, Meg's and Heather's, as you saw. And yeah, thank you for that, um, Christina, about announcing. Yeah, we do want, I'm, I'm especially hoping that um, that Heather, uh, with her strong writing skills, will help, will, will be a, a steady liaison with you, Christina, in, in terms of announcing our uh, e-portfolio happenings through the Mahara newsletter. And uh, she's eager to do that. And I know, Christina, you'll be eager to, <laughs> to work with her on that. And so I'm hoping she can, um, if you know, whatever we decide to promote for our spring meeting with MUG, we can do a little bit more promotion since we have a smaller group here today. So I think we need to work a little more actively on that. Uh, Keith, it'd be great to hear more about what you're doing this semester. You're doing course portfolios. Yeah, that's great. Um, perhaps, you know, if, if everyone here is interested in that kind of student showcase with this, for this MUG group, perhaps we could plan on that. Keith could share some of his samples. I'm teaching uh, this spring, I'm teaching a, a counseling course that I've done before, so I could share some of mine and, you know, we could, we could each share a couple. <laughs> yes, true. Funny to announce a newsletter in another newsletter. Yes. So true. It's called synergy. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Um, so I think that's it for, we, you know, we don't have too much more to present, but we would just like to um, hear from everyone here what other topics you'd like this group to cover. And again, the most pressing thing would be to figure out um, possible uh, panel or presentation um, for ABLE. And I think I'm volunteering Heather to <laughs> help coordinate this submission. But we could do it like we did last year where we, um, you know, we could generate the framework and then just ask for um, individuals to send us kind of a subsection that we could include. I think this, I didn't look at the details of the call, but it's usually a pretty brief proposal that gets submitted. Um, so we don't need that much to do that. But again, I would be really interested in building consensus about the track as well as Kind of each individual area, so we have an so we have an idea to put together something that makes sense. Oh yeah, Christine <laughs> and Christine is inviting us to New Zealand. Oh, I know someday, <laughs> someday. Um, 
Yeah, Keith, I think you have a lot that you could contribute. Would, um, after this call, I mean, just because it's hard to keep up with the chat here, but I'm wondering if um, folks could email me and I could share with Heather any individual ideas about the panel. Christina, while we have people together, do you want to give any updates about Mahara, uh, future versions, or anything else? Okay, so I'm grabbing the mic. Um, we actually just had a um, developer meeting last night, um, or earlier in your day, and um, that was just to remind everyone that Feature Freeze for MATA 1504, so our April 2015 version, will be uh, in the first week of February. And you might have also seen either in the newsletter or in the forum that we um, started renaming our upcoming Mahara version. So instead of having uh, Mahara 1.11 or going to Mahara 2.0 or so, we are actually uh, switching to a date based format. And that would be that the first number is always the year, and the second number is the month in which Mahara is being released. So that's why version 1504 is the version of 2015 of April. And 1510 will be the version that we'll bring out in October this year. With, um, with that change, we, we really hope that it makes it easier, especially for the not-so-technical users, um, to know which version they are on and also how long it is being supported, because it's e you can see directly on the version number um, when this version came out and then can more easily calculate um, a year and a half for the end of support. And you don't have to think about Mahara 1.4 or 1.5, when did that come out, and, and so on. So hopefully that will make it a little bit easier, especially for our regular user base. Um, one thing that we also decided over the last few weeks was that we are going to switch to Bootstrap for our themes um, and entire CSS framework. However, because that is a major um, task, that our um, front-end team here at Catalyst is currently undertaking. Uh, we are not going to roll out for um, the April version because we simply don't have enough time, but we are looking into rolling it out in October. And so that would mean that all themes will become responsive. Um, we are also planning on modernizing themes, um, potentially offering a few less um, but making it easier to theme um, because the current themes have been in Mahara for quite a long time, so we really think it's time for a refresh. And um, that entire CSS uh, framework work also involves that we will need to look at our templates, so how the pages are being constructed, and we do also want to make changes there, modernize everything, and yeah, give it a fresh coat of paint, and also at the same time see where we can make more usability improvements. So that is coming for October, and the idea is also, because it is such a big change, that we will uh, look into increasing the support for the last version that does not yet have Bootstrap. So if everything goes well and we can release Bootstrap in October, that would mean that the April version, so 1504, will be supported longer um, than just a year and a half to give um, organizations who cannot upgrade as quickly or cannot um, create a new theme as quickly can stay on the other on, on an earlier version of Mahara longer uh, in order to um, use it but not have to worry about upgrading directly. Um, David, we are going uh, we are currently going with the latest Bootstrap version. Um, and we are going to use, uh, and we are using Bootstrap um, SAS, so not um, less. And um, if you are interested, you can already check out the first patches that we've uh, pushed through. Uh, let me just quickly find them. Um, and um, there you'll see directly what is already in the works. 
And um, so that would actually mean in terms of Moodle and Mahara and Bootstrap, um, we will be one version ahead of um, Moodle with our Bootstrap version because I think Bootstrap 3 is currently the latest. So we, we definitely use the latest version of Bootstrap there. Um, yes, that's pretty much a quick update on those things. If you have any questions for me, and I'm happy to answer them either for those or for other things. Uh, Keith asked, are the main mobile apps uh, still Portfolio App and Mahara? Uh, yes. Though Portfolio App has been renamed into Experience App, and they did have a um, experience app. They did have a sort of Kickstarter project, but I haven't heard back from them yet. Um, I haven't seen any any updates lately whether that has been released now or not. So we would need to check back with Bright Cooker who is working on that. And um, any other updates? Oh yes, um, one other update. Um, at the end of last year, we contacted a few universities um, around the world in different parts of the world who have been very active um, in the forums, in user groups, or um, also just letting us know their features and discussing usability around Mahara. And um, so what we definitely want to do is, um, now that the holidays are over, get more, um, back in touch and see how we can involve them into um, in usability experience exercises with the users so that we get um, more feedback from users, especially when implementing new big features. If you are interested in that, um, please send me an email. and. Um, we can add you to the list and see how we can involve you in that. And um, one thing that we are currently looking at, and we should be able to give you um, initial mockups for those new features um, in February, is to consolidate um, the pages and collections part of uh, Mahara to make it easier to sort pages, put them into collections, um, have everything kind of on one screen, and just improve working with those things. A second part of that work is also um, to be able to add a page to multiple collections and share, still share or share a page apart, apart from a collection. Um, so there, there are a number of big things that we are currently looking at um, that will have a huge impact on usability and should make things easier. But because they technically they are rather complicated in some aspects, and that's why they haven't been uh, realized yet, um, it, it takes us a bit of time for that. But um, it is well underway already, and that is definitely an area of usability um, work that we would like to have a lot of people from the community take a look at, comment on it, and give us their feedback no matter where you are, because you know your system best, you know where your users are having problems, and please all feel free to involve your users. Um, Oh, great to hear that about um, Mahara Droid Roger. Um, then I guess I'll catch up with Meredith. And yes, keep a uh, page for use across collections would be good, definitely. Another big piece of work which will already go into 1504 um, will be the services. It will be the first stages of it. There's still also heaps of work that needs to be done around it to make it easy to connect um, applications to Mahara and so have a connection manager and some other parts. But the basic infrastructure will be in Mahara core. And we had discussed that with Moodle HQ um, at the beginning of October, and our developers have started on realizing the part uh, that needs to go into Mahara. And part of that will also be that we'll make some usability improvements as well in other parts. 
And so the initial things will be in the April release, and then we'll continuously work on making things better there as well. So our developers are really heavily working on new features and also fixing things um, that are being reported uh, so that we will um, ideally again be ready mid-April for a release. I'm hesitant to give you an exact date because there is still quite a bit of work that needs to be done by the team. But please do feel free to test anything that is already in review or if you can, uh, if you have IT personnel who can download the latest version of Mahara for you onto a testing server or maybe even a virtual machine in your computer. That would be fantastic if you just give it um, a test drive, check things out, how they are working, and see if you're running into any problems or if you like any new features in particular. That would be fantastic. And I think that's it for me. Great. Thanks, Christina. Um, does anyone else have any updates or want to share any, share any thoughts on anything Mahara related or otherwise. <laughs> um, if, if not, I'm thinking, um, trying to think about a game plan for our ABLE work. Um, given the deadline, well, I know we're waiting to hear back from uh, Trent to Christina's question, but I'm wondering if folks can try to share with me, um, if they'd like to participate, of course, um, in some type of uh, Mahara panel, uh, perhaps by February 1, does that sound reasonable, to send, send me some thoughts, some notes, a blurb, <laughs> uh, anything. Um, of course, Roger, it'd be great to include you again uh, virtually or, rec or recording like we did last time, or, or of course in person too. But uh, if, if we could get thoughts from folks by February 1, I think that would give us enough time. Um, I can work with Heather on a draft, and we'd still have enough time to do some revising as a group. Um, Keith, I'm still not sure about the track. I think we, we'd want to wait to hear um, the answer to uh, the question Christina posed to Trent about appropriate track for our panel. I mean, he's familiar with our panel. We've done that two times. I, I just want to make sure that we um, find the best uh, fit for us. So why don't we see what he says. But uh, I do think we can still begin generating ideas regardless of whether we're in that corporate panel or not. Um, I think everyone should look at the other panels, though. It does seem like there's uh, three key themes that ABLE is stressing this year, and I do think that um, it covers some of the topics that we've been exploring. Um, uh, and so I guess we just need to, to figure out who, who from the group here is interested. And perhaps we have some people that aren't on this call that would also be interested. Um, we can, uh, I can post on our Facebook page too and uh, see who else might be interested in joining us. Does that sound like a plan? Okay, yeah, thanks for posting about the submission pages. That, um, I'm definitely going to want to learn more about that uh, because of our assessment challenges. So thanks, Christina. Is it, this is the new version for April or for October? Oh, Moodle. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> But um, Beth, having, having said that, actually, um, it would be possible if you want to use it in Blackboard, uh, not the plugin itself, but kind of a similar workflow, because um, Sam had uh, commented on on that once, um, and other universities also uh, do it similarly. So what you can do, if you want to use the Mahara um, portfolio of for assessment, you could generate a secret URL and put that into a Blackboard assignment and then have the instructor just
call up the secret URL and use that. The, the only drawback using that method is, is that the portfolio is not being locked. So students yeah. could still make changes while, they, while the assessment takes place. Um, alternatively, of course, there's the Mahada group, but we don't have um, a great book there, so it would be a two-step process again. Um, the students could submit their portfolio to the group, and now in Mahada 1.10 you don't see all the pages anymore, but you do see um, individual pages, and if pages are in a collection, you only see the collection, uh, reducing that list and um, then paste the link into a Blackboard assignment and then the instructor would only need to log in to Mahara and um, look at the assignment there. The advantage of using a Mahara group at the moment is that you can actually archive those submissions once the page is being released. So right before the page is being released, an archive is being made that will be stored on the server. So for any um, traceability or kind of getting back to the student saying, well, actually, it was what you submitted, um, that would be the good approach. We do not have that feature for Moodle yet, um, but we are looking into how to do this. And then hopefully in the future, at some point, that with web services, when integration is being made possible, similar functionality could also be developed um, for other LMS so that they can use um, those features of Mahara as well. Okay, thank you. Can I just um, just uh, uh, clarify on the way, the way we work it here? Um, what, what we do, we get the student to put the secret e URL of the start page of their collection at the top of the start page. We then ask them to export their um, collection or pages as HTML, and they actually upload that um, exported zip file to our Moodle assignment um, area, which is what you could do with the uh, Blackboard and just get them to upload the zip file to the Blackboard assignment area. Um, when the tutor then um, opens it, they can open the zip, view the HTML page, which obviously doesn't have the richness in it, but they can click on the uh, secret URL to see the real life thing. What that gives us, though, is a locked um, file, which the exam board are happy about because it's a locked set in stone file. So you can see any difference or things that have changed since that was uh, created. But we've it's it's no different from handing in a Word document or something. You know, it's a it's a standalone object, as it were, which satisfies the exam board. So that that's the way we get around it. Um, and we did use the Mahara Moodle plugin quite a long time ago, but it only supported single pages at the time, and there was other issues. So um, I think our Moodle and Mahara versions went so out of sync it didn't work properly. So uh, we sort of dropped that for a while. So that's what we're using at the moment. Um, so uh, yeah, that, that kind of works quite well, because it satisfies the exam board. The tutor's got a zip top set of files they can just stick on a memory stick and take home and mark if they want to offline on the train or something. Um, and uh, it's a little bit clunky for the students, but hey, that's good digital literacy for them, isn't it? Definitely. Thank you. Thanks. I'm seeing your note. Uh, so Sam Taylor will be with you in a different role, Christina. Is that what you're writing? Had too many Sams leaving their <laughs> leaving their jobs this year. So no, I meant in a different world, so somewhere else, not not with us here in New Zealand. I'm afraid, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. But I think she can tell us a little bit more once once everything is finalized. Okay. Terrific. We'll look forward to that. Um, okay. I think that's it for us. But I I think our priorities now are to get the able. Um, proposal together and then once that is done, um, looking to our spring meeting, uh, possible student showcase um, if everyone's in agreement. Uh, if that sounds good to folks, then we'll coordinate both items in that order and then plan for a mug meetup of sorts at, at ABLE or directly following, if, assuming Christine is making the trip out this way. Does that sound like a plan to everyone? 
Sounds great. I'm just just looking at the employability strand again. I'm just wondering, um, Beth or others that are here, yeah, um, do you ever get students asking you why aren't I just using LinkedIn and putting my stuff there? And is there something around this being able to build their digital um, identity privately um, before they release it to the public? I don't know if there's anything around that we can look at. Yeah, I, th I think that's a, a great uh, question and probing question, Roger, and we do get that question a lot. And I've done workshops here on the differences of ePortfolio and LinkedIn and kind of how to harness the power of both. And I do think for students, um, you know, thinking about ePortfolios as a developmental process, that, you know, through an ePortfolio, a student develops the language to talk about themselves as um, a potential employee, leader, <laughs> um, learner, et cetera, in a way that LinkedIn is not built for. You know, LinkedIn is really about the, you know, building your network and making those connections. But through ePortfolio, you know, you become that confident person that's out there making those connections. And you can show, you know, it's both process and product is what we always say. It's, it's, and um, those are such key pieces during such a formative time. And um, oh. Do we lose everyone or not? Still there? Okay. Okay. Um, so anyway, so I think um, it's great to talk to. Yeah, still here. Um, Sorry. Okay. Um, I think it's a great conversation starter, and perhaps you know, perhaps that's an idea for a panel. You know, to talk about um, e-portfolios uh, and LinkedIn, and and the possibilities, the differences, and the synergy between um, using both together. Yeah. yeah, also, I think that one of the things you can also say is that when you're applying to different sorts of positions, they'll say, okay, you can link your LinkedIn here, and then if you have a website of your own or if you have something else, then you have an additional material to show. Uh, and it's just way more personalized, like Beth was saying, like, you can develop your stuff there, but also LinkedIn is just so rigid, and they have, they have a very specific system, and ePortfolio allows you to basically have your own website. And in demonstrations, we show the students the difference between the two tools, and we also show them how to link them. So yeah. we go through the process of putting a LinkedIn profile badge on a portfolio and vice versa so that they understand the difference and know how to use both tools to the best advantage. So maybe that's do you, um, Go ahead. So I was just going to say, do, do you uh, use... Is uh, open digital badges at all? Um, because we've been um, sort of sort of started using those both because you can display them in Mahara and LinkedIn and Moodle and issue them for Moodle and so on. They can link together quite nicely. I don't know if you're doing anything around that area as well for um, students demonstrating abilities that are not assessed things. You know, whatever they happen to be, whether it's volunteering or or, or something else. Yeah, we've just, you know, we're in the early stages of that, Roger. We've been using Credly to award badges for ePortfolio excellence. We've used badges to uh, recognize completion and kind of pseudo MOOC experiences. Um, I would say we're at the very beginning of that, but but maybe that's a potential, you know, presentation theme, ePortfolios, LinkedIn badges, kind of how they all work together and using our various institutions to kind of showcase elements of that, you know, in that career track. Uh, I think that's the one you're referring to, correct? Yeah, uh, I was just thinking we could, um, with with all respect, I think we, if we look slightly outside of the Mahara box, we can find a lot of other bits and bods that we're all doing, but that yeah. the Mahara is the glue that holds it together, if that makes sense. So, so you know, rather than starting at Mahara and trying to stay within it, if we look at other things we're doing and say, well, Mahara is the glue that holds this whole thing together, that may be a different focus for um, the presentation. Yeah, absolutely, Roger. I think that's what I think that's what I was looking for, too, because I think that gets us out of the, um, the limit of the corporate track, which I think could be limiting. Um, and Mahara is our commonality, but as you said, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of other things that are very similar and would be a 
more mass appeal, even if a particular audience member isn't using Mahara. Um, I think that these things would be, you know, this is what everyone's <laughs> kind of mulling over, um, how to use ePortfolios to promote employability and lifelong learning. You know, there's some, there's some clear common themes that extend well beyond the choice of platform. Uh, Christina's tweeting me there because everything's buzzing now. Um, the aggregator, that's a really good word that Christina's just used on the chat there. Um, the glue that holds it together, or maybe the band-aid that holds it all together, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, all of the above. Okay, well, I certainly like that idea. I think that's... Um I, I think that's very important. I think a lot of our recent work with the PACE path is built around the idea of, of helping students to build a network and develop very employable skills. And I think all of that can be developed through ePortfolio work. Uh, glue, and we definitely need a good title. So Christina, we'll need Christina's magic to help us come up with a good presentation title. <laughs> if it involves glue, yeah, that's... that sounds <laughs> we could uh, now, are they going to be Backstreet Boys? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I'm trying, even though I've got I've got vendors calling me on the phone. I'm trying I'm trying to keep all of, uh, all my various devices and Backstreet Boys quiet during this meeting to be as professional as possible. Since I have a few staff members that don't know about my Backstreet Boy interests. <laughs> um, okay. Any other thoughts on? Uh, Presentation theme. I think that's a good one. Should we, um, I guess, should we leave everyone with that and just um, agree to share ideas via email? We can apply, a, a, you know, reply all to the group or just send them to me and we can send them to, send them to Heather if you have Heather's email. And we'll try to get something going by the beginning of February to allow some time for um, exchange and review. But seems like that first track, tailoring a good fit for learner success and employability, uh, might fit some of these ideas about ePortfolio, LinkedIn, badging. I think badging was mentioned in another track. Uh, so I'll have to look at this. Maybe you all can look at this too. Um, but there is obviously crossover between all these topics. But I think that sounds good. Any, any last comments from the group? Okay, well, um, thanks for sharing part of your day with us. Um, it's always great chatting with everyone about uh, ePortfolios. And we'll connect via email. Oh, yeah, special thanks to my new team members who attended today. <laughs> um, great to have you all involved with this, too. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, guys.